this module, we'll see that when we are in our life stage of adolescence, that is uh, the age when we reach high school. So, how gender and adolescence interact with each other. This is quite interesting because uh, your memories of reaching that age are still fresh in your mind. So, you will take interest in it. This course is, what is this course? A very short definition here. This course is stuff of our communication. Everything that is related with our communication is called this course, number one. And what is that stuff? That stuff includes knowledge of language the use of that knowledge of language definitely when we communicate we use that knowledge and then communicative situations demand variation in language that is use of varieties of language and in one module specifically we have talked about gender and varieties so three things knowledge of language a use of knowledge of language and variation in language according to the situation, these are stuff of communication. Communication can be done through different modes. We can use speech, we can use writing, we can use visuals, we can uh, use other non linguistic. Uh, things. Even you know, your flag has a meaning, turban has a meaning, our uh, dress, our uh, buildings, all these things carry some meaning. So, these are meaning bearing systems and these convey meaning. So, they are also part of communication. Even paintings, paintings are meaning a mode of communication, they too convey some things to us. So, communication can be used by adopting any of these modes or a combination of these. But when we use the term linguistic communication, so it means the communication that is done through language, through words. It can be either spoken, it can be written, it can be either both written and spoken. For example, what I am doing here, this is mix of spoken and written. I am speaking, uh, I am also using a written language because I consult that language while speaking. So, it, it, we, I am using mix of both. We want to know in this module our main concern is how we construct gender in adolescence through spoken discourse. Yes. Why adolescence? Before adolescence, we were in childhood. After adolescence, we will be in adulthood. So, these are three major life stages, you know. So, why are we emphasizing so much on this stage for the study of relationship between language and gender. So, the answer to this why comes here. Number one, this is an important site to study language and gender. It means there would be closer interaction between the two during this life stage. That is why this is the life stage where we develop our identity. This is identity formation stage. Gender is prominent in this process of gen identity work, in this process of identity formation. Gender is very much part of that. We are aware that we are men or women. So, this awareness is at its peak during our adolescence. Society is organized into gender groups. As members of these groups, 
we are born to follow social norms and conventions. In the previous modules, early modules of this course, we have studied that society is divided into gender groups for social organization and for division of labor. Some works and some roles are performed by women, some roles and functions are performed by men and they together uh, run the uh, functions of society. But both gender groups follow certain norms and conventions. These norms and conventions are called social or gender orders or we also call it gender ideology. These are the things which we have already studied. This time we want to relate them with a new topic. So this is the benefit of our previous knowledge. Gender order, we have reached up to what is gender order. Gender order shapes our identity at every stage of life. You know, in childhood, we have a gender order, separate set of norms and conventions which are transferred by our family members. In adolescence, again, we have a new gender order, a new set of norms and conventions. In adulthood, separate, that way. So, in adolescence, we are forming, we are constructing our identity to definitely gender order would also show its influence here. Number two, in adolescence, this is second reason to focus on adolescence. We move from family to new heterosexual peer group. Heterosexual means people belonging to opposite sexes. So, if we are uh, female, so we would now uh, be meeting males and males will be meeting females. So, this is heterosexual peer group. Gender is more prominent in these heterosexual groups and is reshaped here. When we live in gender exclusive, male exclusive or female exclusive group, so we cannot understand gender. We can understand it in a situation when both sexes are involved. Number three, the reason to select adolescence. Adolescence, adolescents are the most institutionalized population in a culture. To understand this statement, first we would define what is institutionalization, institutionalized and institution. This term has come from sociology. So, so, society is organized according to value system, and values may be economic, political, religious, so on, and ways of behaving which we also call customs and conventions. So, these are two uh, things around which societies are organized, value system plus convention. The value systems and conventions together are called institutions. So, one meaning of this term institution is that common meaning which we often say that uh, mosque, is a, uh, mosque is an institution, school is an institution, etc. So, at abstract level, this value system and conventions are also called institution. Okay, now, there is interaction between the two meanings. Because institutions in the sense of value system and conventions do not exist in vacuum, they are related with some institution where we learn them, acquire them, internalize them. We go to mosque, we go to school, we go to university. So, this is how we reach the places where we would learn these values and customs. The life stage that is main target of social norms and customs is adolescence because 
in this age we join all these institutions and we pass through the process of institutionalization when we learn value system and convention so we are passing through a process and that process is called institutionalization it is comparable with the term socialization this is also a kind of socialization but in childhood socialization was being monitored supervised by parents and elders and neighbors etc in adolescence the same thing is being done that is being called institutionalization but this time this work is done by institutions of the society these norms and expectations quicken the identity work focus on identity work and adolescence okay so these norms this process of institutionalization it quickens the process of identity formation there is increase in how it how this function how this process gets speed which thing propels it pushes it fast that is verbal activity that is symbolic activity and in symbolic activities come our language our talk our uh, dress our ideas our hair style our lifestyle everything relating to us is symbol of something and all these symbolic resources they get speed from the process of institutionalization and when they get speed so we form we construct our identity number 4 adolescents are monitored according to gender norms the main focus of this monitoring is how this monitoring takes place through language why because all adult activities take place mainly through language we interact with each other in different contexts we talk and during talk we show who we are what are our interests what are our values so language plays a vital and central role in this whole process we conclude from this talk in this module that gender is more prominent in identity formation identity formation takes place through language in adolescence and adolescence in this way becomes a most important location or site where we can closely study the relationship between language and gender